to another episode of the Drummer's Guide 2. Today I have a question from Hog Blokula. Um, I'm probably saying your name wrong and I'm really sorry. Uh, and it's through YouTube. Um, and they are basically asking what is the level that you need to be at to be a session musician. Um, obviously I'm going to talk in terms of being a session drummer because I'm a drummer. Uh, but, um, and let me just, I'll just um, define what I consider being a session musician because the definition has kind of changed over the years. It used to be that a session musician was someone that only basically recorded on albums, on songs, in the studio, that was a session musician. Um, these days it's a bit more of a broad definition I think, and I certainly use it in that way, which is sort of like recording but also doing touring, and I don't know whether that's a sign of the times in that you can't necessarily make a living from just recording. I know that a lot of people do, um, but yeah, I, I prefer this broad term because it kind of just it makes it easy to explain to people. Um, so yeah, so what are the skills needed? What is the level of skill that's needed? I think in terms of being a drummer, um, there are, well for me, I think there's three main points that you need to cover, two of which are relevant to any musician, uh, one of which is definitely essential to a drummer, it will definitely help other instruments, but um, yeah, drummer. So the number one uh, skill that you need to be a session drummer for sure, uh, is playing in time. Sounds simple, sounds obvious, but I tell you, it's shocking sometimes the amount of drummers that I see that don't hold this skill in high regard. And to me, that's that's literally our job. <laughs> it's just to stay in time and get people in time. So um, what that means to me is uh, not just being able to play in time without a click, what that also means is playing with a click and not only that but making it sound like you're not playing to a click and that doesn't mean playing out of time, what that means is just like playing relaxed uh, and, and being able to feel the music and make it groove and not make it sound monotonous and make sure that you're still keeping with the groove of the other musicians and the song and all of that sort of stuff. Um, the other side of that is also making sure that the rest of the band lock in together you know you're you're kind of part of the glue or a big part of the glue that holds the band together um so making sure that you're able to kind of move ever so slightly with other musicians if need be but still keeping within the realm of that tempo that click that backing track whatever it is that you're playing to so i think irref irrefutably being able to play in time no matter what's going on in fact that's just reminded me of story so when i was when i very 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 first started out playing drums when i was 11 i had this, this drum teacher um called graham instrel he was great and what he used to do was he used to make me play just a just time just a beat um and then he would play completely out of time and try and throw me off i'd completely forgotten this until now till now um and the the key was to keep playing in time and he used to drill that like to try and make me play in time and i, th I mean i think i did fairly well because he didn't do it for very long he was like yeah fine and I was like, oh okay cool i don't know um so yeah playing in time essential the second thing uh when you're a session musician um, this is not applicable if you're your own artist or whatever but if you're a session musician a hired gun as I would call it playing for the song I think again such an underrated skill um, and discipline more than anything so not sort of getting halfway through a song and getting bored or thinking that it needs spicing up by you overplaying something it's kind of like losing sight of why you're there, why you're all there, you know, you're there to play a song, you're there to play this artist's song um, and convey that to an audience, hopefully. Um, and if you're sort of like playing all over it and doing what you want, it becomes a very selfish thing and, and that that's not why you're there. Like, absolutely, if you want to do your own thing, do it, go do it and all power to you. I have massive respect for people that do their own projects and stuff like that I think it's yeah incredibly brave you've got to go do that but when you're there for a different for someone else especially if you're being paid um although to be honest I don't care whether I'm being paid or not I'm always playing for the artist and for the song that is like again I'd say that's equal with playing in time it just it's so important and the other thing is sometimes it's not the artist that's there that's sort of like directing you you might have a musical director and it's having the respect for the musical director that they have a view of the whole picture as opposed to just your part so if you're playing something it's not feeling right they think can you just change that don't take it personally it's about the whole it's not about just you um and again if you want if you want it to be about you totally cool go do your own thing 
absolutely go for it. Um, so I think that's really important and also being able to interpret uh, what people want, um, especially people that maybe aren't very good at communicating, you know, how would a non-drummer know how to sort of like talk in a drummer's kind of language? Probably wouldn't. I mean, it's possible, but if you can interpret, you know, an artist saying, I need it to sound more like gritty, knowing what that means, or I need this song to sound more purple. Yes, someone has said that to me and I interpreted it. They seemed happy with the result. But do you know what I mean? You've got to be flexible about these things and you've got to have the respect to not roll your eyes and be like, look, I know best. It's what they're feeling. You have to take that into consideration and try and do your best. Um, the third thing kind of links into this and that is just getting along with people because 90% of any session gig is, well, not studio stuff necessarily oh no actually no studio stuff as well but it's sitting around with people and chatting and hanging out and and just having a laugh and you know especially on the road oh my gosh so you play at a gig that's maybe an hour and a half two hours you'll have a sound check maybe that's an hour so that's three hours out of 24 hours okay we'll let you sleep for like I don't know let's say six hours just for fun so that's like what is that 13 hours together um you've got to be able to get on with people, you've got to be able to relax and you know people will have different views and, and won't always get on and there's bound to be some sort of conflict somewhere but it's about dealing with that and dealing with people and, and making the best of it and making it so that you're having a nice time, putting yourself in a headspace so you don't get wound up by certain things that you maybe would in other situations and just again looking at the bigger picture and going actually is this important and actually look at what I'm able to do right now. So I think those are the three main things that you need to get up to a professional standard. Um, and by professional, I mean, you don't even think about these things. Like they just come so naturally. Like I don't, I don't think about playing to a click. I just hear a click, I play to it. It's kind of like, it's completely natural to me because I've just done it for so long. Um, same with, you know, playing with other people. I've just done it for so long. You just kind of tune into people and it's not 100%, you're not always going to be perfect, but that's the human bit, you know, if you didn't want a human element, then you wouldn't get humans in. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Timing, playing to the click, um, playing for the song, absolutely, and then just getting along with people. And I think if you can really nail those things and, and, and be happy, and, and sometimes you won't know if you've nailed it until you get to the crunch time, and I mean, if you've seen my video before about like my ultimate failure, which I will put up somewhere here so you can watch it. Um, I failed massively on the first time that I really had to step up um, and it, it broke my heart, but it, it made me step up and, and, and get better and work on it. And um, I'm here, so it, it does work. It's hard. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave you. I hope that I've answered your question hog and I don't like calling you hog because it seems disrespectful but that's what your username is so we're just gonna go with it anyway I'm gonna go I'll be back next week with another subject I hope you're having a good week and I will speak to you soon all right see you later